Hello Patriots, Crazy Hawk 99 here. Uh, we're gonna do something a little bit different uh, on this video, obviously gun related. You probably see some parts in front of you, or uh, in front of me. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk a little bit about this, this uh, lower receiver right here. This is uh, manufactured by a company called KE Arms. And I think, yeah, the nomenclature of it is the KP-15. It is 100% polymer. So plastic for, you know, I mean, it's not, polymer is a fancy plastic. But other than the screws on the butt plate and the takedown and, and pivot pins, what you see is all polymer. Uh, and I should say the serial members of small metal plate that's been pinned in there as well, because it is a serialized item. It's a complete, a complete strip lower, if that makes any sense. So it's ready to go. Just put your parts in and go. But it is all polymer as opposed to typical uh, aluminum uh, mill spec. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about it. Um, it accepts mill spec components. Um, for example, the buffer and, buffer and the buffer spring. In this case, it accepts, even though it looks like an A2, which will be a rifle uh, buffer. It accepts a carbine buffer and buffer spring. And uh, the some of the differences of this, other than the fact that it's polymer, the takedown pins, normally on a, on a uh, mill spec lower, the takedown pins have a detent and a spring that you install during the process or they're already installed if you buy a, uh, an assembled uh, lower. And uh, this does not have that. So that's that takedown, the d detent and the springs in a mill spec uh, lower is what retains the pin when you, when you pull it out so it doesn't come out. That's not the case with these because of the way it's made. They, they didn't have the ability to do that. So it uses a pin with a little uh, spring loaded ball bearing there to kind of take, to kind of retain it as well. So it is retained to some degree but it is possible when you're taking it apart to remove easily to remove the pins all the way. And, uh, you know, that I guess does pose the, the risk that you might lose one if you're field stripping it. Um, but I don't think that's a big deal. Uh, let's see what else is different about it. It uh, uses a, so for the safety uh, barrel, if you will, the, the part that rotates, uh, it uses a proprietary component there, uh, and I'm told, or I, I shouldn't say I'm told, they say you can use a mill spec one, but if you do, and if you ever have to take it apart, you'll have to take it to an armorer. I don't know what that means because I haven't tried to do that, and I probably won't. And it also, the detent that the safety engages, uh, it uses a proprietary, their own, their own detent as well. And the reason for that is normally you're, you're installing that uh, safety detent when the grip's removed on a lower, like here's a millispec lower, you'll put that in right here in this hole and it'll drop it down. Well, you can't do that with this because the grip's all part of it. So that's one reason it uses that system. So they use their own, it doesn't have a little uh, a lip on it and you drop it down from the top and install it that way. Uh, some other, it does use uh, millspec uh, trigger pins, millspec trigger, uh, no problem, millspec uh, magazine uh, catch and, and release. And it's the same for the bolt catch. So most of the components it uses are mill spec. Uh, some are proprietary. Uh, the other thing that's proprietary, it's not really proprietary. It uses a standard uh, buffer detent uh, and buffer detent spring, but normally that's retained when you're threading it on, if you're not familiar, that's, that's retained by the um, receiver extension or what, what's often called a buffer tube. Uh, that retains the buffer in there prior to the final assembly. This, since this doesn't have a receiver extension or a buffer tube, uh, what they do is when you put the, the buffer de detent down in there, there's a place for a roll pin. So you drive a roll pin in and that retains it. Not a big deal either, in my opinion. Uh, some of the pros of this uh, it has, as you can see here, it has slots in the rear that go all the way through for you to put a sling in uh, to, to a web sling you can strap on there. Uh, that also, I'm told, is an M-lock. So if you wanted to do a QD sling, you could put an M-lock QD point there on the either side. 
and attach your QD sling there. Or you could use, uh, you could install a QD uh, mount on either side of the stock in this place, that uh, the barrel style of QD, and that would work as well. Um, another plus is the Magwell has a, a very pronounced flare to it, so that's gonna make your uh, mag, your mag uh, replacements under duress or speed a lot easier and go in a lot faster. Um, for pros, I think weight's gonna be a pro. Uh, this is pretty lightweight, so what we're gonna do here is gonna measure everything, but before we get to that, we'll continue on with a, the, the maybe what some would consider the negatives. One is obviously it's polymer, so uh, some people aren't going to like that, and those people would just steer clear of this, this product, and, and I would understand that if that were you. Um, would this be my only AR? Probably not, but uh, at the same time, I didn't have a problem uh, purchasing this at the price point. The typical price point for these on Brown L's, anyway, is about $110. Um, for, I, got it, I think I got it on sale, and I had a coupon, so I got it for about $85. Bucks. Um, another potential negative is if you like if you're the type of person that likes to change out the butt stock on your uh, on your lower receiver from maybe a a2 style such as the one on it um, and you had that on there and you wanted to take it off you can't take it off or maybe you wanted an m4 style collapsible you can't do that as well so that's a negative uh, potential negative depending you know not necessarily automatic negative um, and uh, the grip is also incorporated into it, which is which is fine. But if you like changing the grip out to, to maybe get a different angle, uh, you don't have that option because it's fixed. So speaking of the angle, I'm gonna attach, see if I can hold it up here, attach the grip to a mill spec. This is an A2 grip, uh, A2 style design grip. And I'm gonna hold it up and just see if I can capture the, the angle because I've not done that before. So let's see what that looks like. And it looks like it is uh, very close to an A2 angled grip, which is fine on an, with an A2 buttstock. But if you had a collapsible buttstock, you're running a little shorter. Maybe uh, you might want often a more vertical, a more vertical uh, pronounced grip. Uh, I don't know if that's coming across very well, but the angle looks very similar to an A2, perhaps slightly more vertical, maybe five degrees more vertical. I don't know the specifics. Um, all that said, uh, I don't see any negatives for me to add something like this to my uh, inventory. The only thing I, initial impressions, now I haven't assembled it and fired it yet, but the initial impressions, the only thing I don't like is because it's polymer, they molded it and it has mold marks around it. Now here on the bottom, they beveled this off, the mold mark there, which is, which is actually kind of nice. It looks very clean and, and complements it frankly, but on the top, you can probably see that mold mark right there. Um, that's an aesthetic thing, a clearly visual. Functionally, it's not gonna be a problem. Uh, you might be able to sand that out. As a matter of fact, clearly you could sand that out and smooth it out if you wanted to. That uh, goes all the way around here and down. They've, they've, you can see they've made an attempt to take out the majority of it, but all along the, basically the circumference of the grip and the trigger guard. And obviously the trigger guard is incorporated or embedded or uh, molded in as well. So that's kind of a negative. I wish they would have, what they did here with this, this flat here, I wish they would have beefed this up a little more. They probably couldn't do that because they wanted to keep the thickness, but I wish they would have beefed it up just a little more so that they could flatten this out and just smooth it out and make it look a little prettier. Um, I mean, this is AR, I mean, a firearm of this design is basically a fighting gun, if you will. Um, so aesthetics really don't play that big into it, but frankly, most of us do care what stuff looks like. We're not we're not throwing our stuff around. But that's something that you that may turn you away. It doesn't. It wouldn't be a a deal breaker for me, but it, yeah, I do consider it a, a noticeable negative. So that aside, so what we're going to do now? I want to weigh these and see how they compare. Now, so what I've got here is I've got uh, the KE-15 parts kit, which is pretty much mil spec, except for uh, their proprietary uh, pins and stuff. Uh, and I'm not gonna take them out of the bag, so this won't be 100% accurate. The, the weight of the bags is gonna play into this, but what, for the KE arms, what I've got is the receiver. Um, 
and the lower parts kit and the buffer in the spring. And that'll equate to, and, and the detent pins are already in there because uh, that's gonna weigh into it as well. So I'm gonna turn this rascal on uh, and zero it. And I'm gonna see if I can stack stuff up on here. And I'll, I'll do it twice just so I get a accurate representation. So I've got one pound, 12 and a quarter ounces. Let's do that again. Zero it one more time. Same, same weight, second time. So one pound, 12 and a quarter for the KE system. And now let's do the uh, mill spec system. Hit zero again. So we're going to use, so we want to grip. So we got the receiver here. We got a trigger guard. Okay. Cause that's part of it. We're going to put the grip on here. And this is going to get kind of tricky because stuff's going to stack up. This is going to be the M4 style stock. Okay. You got the lower parts kit castle nut and end plate, trigger assembly, might run out of weight, or not weight but space, and let's see if we can stack that up without it falling off. So that's two pounds, one and an eighth. Do that all over again. Zero. Let's see if I can do it in a different. No, oh, I can't do that. Here, if I stand that up, it might buy me some more space. If I stand that up, set stuff down in there. Set that down in there. One pound, one ounce. So very close, or I'm sorry, two pounds, one ounces. And we'll use the lighter of two to give, uh, or the heavier of the two in this case, to give the KE arms uh, the benefit of the doubt. So taking that away, now we're gonna go to the A2 style. Zero it again. A2 style, make sure we got everything we need. We don't need that, we don't need that. We're gonna need the receiver. We're gonna need the trigger guard, the lower parts kit. And the trigger, we don't need the end cap. Come to this, this stock, we'll put that there. Trigger assembly, see if I can, don't need the end plate. Triggers in there. This is the the uh, plug for the receiver extension for that. So set that on top there. As a matter of fact, we might be able to slide some of this down in here. There, that goes there, and put that in there. Put that on. And last but not least is a grip. Two pounds, seven and seven eighths and I think that's everything so let's take all that off do it again I'm just make sure the scale is good zero two pounds seven and seven eighths Okay, well, I think that uh, <clears throat> is pretty much proof. Uh, A2 to A2, 
you're looking at a considerable savings. So uh, the KE again was one pound uh, 12 and a quarter ounces, and the A2 is two pounds seven and seven eighths ounces. Um, and the M4 was two pounds one and eight or one and one ounce. So uh, about six ounces less for the, the KE arms, about six ounces less than the M4 and uh, noticeably less than the A2. Uh, so that's inter that was interesting. And I had not done that before this video. So that's a, that was uh, live as it happened. So uh, stay tuned. I've already got the, the parts. I think that I'm going to put on this, the barrel selected. It's going to be a 15 inch barrel. And I've got uh, hopefully what it's going to be a color match on the color. Um, this is flat dark earth. I should point out that they also sell us in black. Those are the only two colors that is, that's pre-configured or pre-molded in. But you could easily duracoat this or Cerakote it if that's something you wanted to do to change the color up. Um, oh, uh, color matching. I don't know if I've ever talked about this, but uh, some of the primary colors you'll find is olive drab, uh, green, uh, flat dark earth, uh, burnt bronze, whatever. Um, it's very difficult to color match a color based off the name of the color from two different manufacturers. So uh, if you get a part from, let's say, Aero Precision that's a flat dark earth and you get a part from KE Arms or you get a part from Stag Arms or something like that, uh, it's almost a guarantee they're not going to match. There'll be a noticeable difference, not, not, sometimes not even close. Um, so that's just something that we can to consider if you're ever color match. So some people like to like the difference anyway, and sometimes it can look good. I've I've got a uh, uh, an M4 that is it's flat dark earth or coyote. I can't figure remember, but uh, there's slight color differences on the way I've got that set up, and it actually complements it. It can in some cases complement it, but if that's something that you're you're uh, OCD about. Just be be aware if you're if you're wanting it to match, try to stick with the same company, or or uh, paint it yourself. Use Duracoat. In my opinion, Duracoat's the easiest user friendly type of one for the do it yourself. Or uh, if you to use Cerakote, Duracoat's just basically a expensive aerosol can that's very durable. Cerakote, I believe the industry says that Cerakote's a better product, more durable product but there's a couple caveats. It doesn't come in an aerosol can. Duracoat comes in an aerosol can or liquid, so you can use a sprayer, spray gun airbrush. Cerakote, you have to use a spray gun or an airbrush, and you also have to bake it afterwards. So Duracoat, you do not have to. They do, Duracoat does sell, I think, a product that you do have to bake, but the majority of their products you don't. Uh, so that's a little bonus on paint. Um, the word paint is, misleading sometimes and that's why you want to we often in the industry refer it to as a finish uh paint is a finish as well but uh if you just call it paint people are thinking rust-oleum or something like that and which is fine that's called that people in the industry refer to that as a rattle can um paint job and that's fine but just know that it's not going to hold up to the wear and tear it'll show the wear a lot faster which uh, a lot of people like they like that battle worn natural battle worn look where their their rifle gets natural scratches and dings on it and and it does have a cool factor to it so uh that's about it so i'm I, i'm gonna plug in after i get this thing built i'll uh, plug in the uh or attach to the video clip in the uh assembled product and maybe some shooting footage we'll see how that goes that's always a challenge for me being a one-man show to do shooting shooting footage but uh, I know a lot of people like to see that, so I'll see what I can do. But hope you enjoyed this, uh, and otherwise, we'll see you next time. So, Har Harper's signing off, too. Right, Harper? Come here, come here, come here, come here. Come here, say hi to the camera. Come here, this way. Oh, no, she's not coming. She doesn't like guns. All right, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.